Recently in Mexico, there was an election and a new president. He's a left-wing guy, and, and I want to read you a quote of his. It's astounding to me that a president, a leader of a country, would make this kind of statement. This is with regard to his people crossing the border and Trump building a wall, and he's saying all kinds of bad things about President Trump. I will defend our migrants all over the American continent and the migrants of the world who by necessity must abandon their towns to find life in the United States. It's a human right we will defend. Really, why don't you kind of move to the right, talking about rights here, and, and create employment. I mean, create a good environment for the free enterprise system to thrive in, and, and people will want to stay in their country. The only reason they're leaving their country is because they have goofs like you who run the country. I mean, my Good grief. I mean, you, you couldn't organize a barbecue for two, could you? I mean, this is ridiculous to say such a thing. You want all of your people to break the laws of another country because you can't put laws in place to look after them in their own country. Uh, the mainstream press in Canada is jumping from country to country. The mainstream press is starving. They only live by government welfare and government handouts anyway, I think. But, but there's little of that these days because there's too many people on the payroll, okay? Except for CBC. Since the prime mistake has come into power, the CBC, which is a communist broadcasting corporation of Canada, they're now getting refunded and rejigged and restarted, and they lose billions of dollars a year. Billions to supply in the public service, really? I mean, they're so slanted, they're so goofy, and they're communistic, and they're taking money from the taxpayer, and they're losing it every day. And uh, that's just not right, it's not proper, and the mainstream press is even complaining about it now. I guess they always have to a certain degree, but now they're really starting to make some noise because it ain't fair. It's not a fair playing field. None of it's fair. None of them should get any money from the government, but they do. That's the system right now. But CBC gets that much and everybody else gets that much and they all should get that much. Hey, just saying. Now, in Canada, they are trying so hard to, to take what's left of the right part of Canada and make it all so far left that you can never bring it back, okay? And the Senate now is once again considering removing Section 43 from the Criminal Code. And, and this piece of legislation protects parents' rights to... Uh, discipline their children, okay? They, they want to raise your kids. That, that's what happens in a socialist country. I and mean, they, want, they want national daycare, and they want, you know, the taxes have to be real high, so you have to work. Both parents have to work, right? That's their plan, that's their objective. And then they come in, they raise your children, and they do all the brainwashing, and all the teachers are left wing, and pretty soon it's a real disaster. And of course, you have organized confusion, and that, of course, is the socialist system, which doesn't work, and then you got war later, and on and on it goes. I should write the book, hey, and it wouldn't be fiction, because it's happened time and time again, and now the Canadian government says, let's do it again anyway. Why wouldn't we? Back to the Senate, this, this section, if you remove the section without Section 43, any use of force would be automatically construed as an assault, an assault against your own child. This would include the following, picking up and moving a child to another room, stopping a child from doing something that he wants to do, removing toys or objects from a child's grasp, enforcing a timeout, stopping a child from leaving his room or leaving his house, restraining a child against his will, enforcing behavior with a spank. That's assault. And you'd get to go to jail, and then the government, of course, continues to look after your children. Wake up, guys <laughs> and gals. This ain't right. I, th th this is bad. I, I mean, kids today, they, they get in school particularly, you can't fail anymore. You get passed automatically. You get a prize for showing up. This is wrong. This is so wrong. Y'all got to get involved. Now, hey, when my kids were small, we didn't get involved. We didn't think we had to. We took them to school, and they learned, and we went to work and did what we did. But that's not the case anymore. Now you got to go and watch them. You got to look at them. And I remember when one of my boys was in school, Landon, he was in about grade eight or nine, he came home and told me all about the socialist system. I said, what about the capitalist system? He said, I only know about that from you, Dad. I never hear it at school. So I went to the school, and I talked to the teacher, and I said, hey, what are you doing? You got to give both sides so they can make a decision. And, and of course, he got mad at me and he wouldn't. And, and on and on it goes. San Francisco, socialism. There are pieces of socialism that I, I don't understand. I ain't smart enough and I ain't, I don't know, I ain't got enough education, I guess. But it, it, it always amazes me that you go into a place like Paris or London and you have houses that cost as much as they cost. And I'm thinking, who can buy these in a socialist system? How does that work? San Francisco, it's a communist place. It is the highest rent in the world. The average monthly rent is $3,500 a month. A medium price home sells for $1.5 million. And typically that's a home that you wouldn't want to live in, okay? <laughs> How does that happen? And they're a sanctuary city. They got more homes 
homeless people per capita than anywhere else in the bloody world, and, and that's happening. Canadians working in the pot business, the cannabis industry is starting to run into big problems now. They're going to the border, and the border guards are saying, hey, if you're in the business, we're not going to let you come here. Oh, you're a shareholder, we're not going to let you come here. I wish they would stop the prime mistake. I, I mean, he's admitted to God and everybody that he was a butt smoker. Kick him away. You know, let us go. We're good. Canada, last thing of the day, kind of a long rant. But this ain't a rant. This is interesting stuff. Something you got to know. It's important for you to know this. Canada is the world's largest producer of mustard seed. The world's biggest exporter as well. In 2017, Canada sold $120 million worth of mustard seed. More than half of it went to the U.S. And, and Frenches bought it. And then they sent it all back to Canada as a finished product, but it's manufactured in the U.S., but it's made entirely with Canadian-grown mustard seed. Hey, do you feel wiser now? Coming from your wiser advisor, y'all come back tomorrow. We're going to have more for you from the right. See ya.